Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the objective type question and answer from the topic uh, quarter wave transformer from the subject uh, transmission lines and waveguides or uh, transmission lines and RF system. Uh, so in this, uh, that is uh, the quarter wave transformer, it plays a very important role in the impedance matching in transmission line. Okay, so in order to provide the impedance matching in transmission line, so we may use uh, this quarter wave uh, transformer, quarter wave line as a one thing, and uh, we may use uh, stub matching. In stub matching, either we may use signal stub matching or double stub matching. So these are all the various methods uh, in order to uh, perform the impedance matching, in order to provide the impedance matching in transmission line. So in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, the quarter wave transformers. So you see, a quarter wave transformer is dash, okay. So the quarter wave transformer, it is nothing but, it's a segment of transmission line near the load end, which is equal in length to one quarter of wavelength. That is the length of the quarter wave line. Why the name is quarter wave uh, line means the length of that uh, quarter wave line is lambda divided by four, okay. So this quarter wave transformer, it is nothing but a segment of transmission line near the load end which is equal in length to one quarter length, okay, of the signal of the line. Uh, then the next one, the impedance inversion, okay, impedance inversion at radio frequencies may be applied with the help of an dash. The impedance inversion in at a radio frequency uh, can be applied using a half wave line, short circuited stub, quarter wave transformer, open circuited stub. So, Using quarter wave transformer, we may provide the impedance inversion of the radio frequencies. Then the next thing, a quarter wave transformer can be considered as a dash, impedance inverter, impedance doubler, tripler, quadrupler. So the quarter wave transformer can be uh, uh, considered as an impedance inverter. That means uh, it can transform Okay, so it, it is used as an impedance inverter. That means it can transform low impedance to high impedance as well as the high impedance to low impedance. Okay, uh, then the next thing, which transmission line is called as one-to-one -one transformer? So the lambda divided by two transmission line, okay, the half wave line. Uh, half wave line means the transmission line is having the length lambda divided by two. It is called as a half wave line. So this half wave line, it can be act as a one-to-one -one transformer. Okay, so in half wave line, uh, it repeats uh, its terminating impedance. Okay, that is uh, whenever the length is equal to lambda divided by two, the input impedance is equal to load impedance. Okay, so that's why it is considered as a one-to-one -one transformer. Then the next thing, uh, what is the condition for quarter wave transformer? So what is the condition for the quarter wave transformer is the Z0 squared, okay, that is the characteristic impedance uh, square, it is equal to the product of Z in and ZL, okay, this is the condition for quarter wave transformer. So that means the characteristic impedance, the characteristic impedance is that not equal to square root of Z in into ZL, Z in is the input impedance, ZL is the load impedance, okay. So the characteristic impedance is the geometric mean of input and load impedances. This is the required condition for quarter wave transformer. Then the next thing, find the characteristics impedance of a quarter wave, quarter wave with the input and the load impedances given by 50 and 25 respectively. So here, what is the question means for a quarter wave uh, line? The input impedance and load impedance is given. The input impedance is at in equal to 50 ohms. And the load impedance is at L is equal to 25 ohm. So the question is that we have to find the characteristic impedance. Okay. So already you know the relation between the characteristic impedance or uh, input impedance and the load impedance of the quarter wave transformer. Okay. So this is a very important two more problem. So Z0 squared is equal to Z in into ZL. Okay, so you know the relation. So in this Z in is given, ZL is given. So you just uh, substitute the values. So Z0 squared is equal to 50 into 25, so 1250. 
from that uh, the characteristic impedance is it not can be calculated by it's a square root of 1250 so the answer is 35.35 ohms okay so the characteristic impedance of quarter wave line with input and the load impedance 50 and 25 years the answer is 35.35 ohms so this is a important question so in this uh, problem so there may be here the load and input impedance is given characteristic impedance uh, we calculated okay so instead of uh, load impedance input impedance there may be a chance to uh, in the problem uh, is it not and is it is given we have to find out input impedance or is it not is it in given we may we may calculate the zl okay so there are three ways uh, of uh, the different problem is that okay uh, the next question you see find the load impedance in a quarter wave transformer with the characteristic impedance is 75 ohms and the input impedance is 200 ohms so in this question uh, we have to find out the load okay is at l value we have to find out so what are the two data given characteristic impedance is at not is given and one more thing input impedance is given okay so you know the formula for quarter wave transformer is at not squared is equal to is at in into is at l so from that we have to find out zl so if you are rearranging the zl is equal to z not square divided by z in okay so what is z not 75 so 75 square divided by z in is 200 so if you are calculating we will get the answer is 28.125 ohms okay so this is the uh, load impedance of the particular quarter wave transformer so this is a second type of question and the third type you see the characteristics impedance of quarter wave transformer with the load and the input impedance is given by 30 and 75 okay so here the load impedance and uh, uh, input impedance is given we have to find out the characteristics impedance okay so as usual formula is that not squared is equal to is that in into is that l so you just substitute then if you are taking square root of this answer we will get a uh, is that not is equal to 47.43 ohms okay so this is the answer uh, then the next question the third type of problem uh, so question you see find input impedance of quarter wave line with a characteristic impedance 50 and the load impedance is 20 okay so this is the third type of problem uh, here the question is we have to find out is that in okay so what are all the data given is that not given is that l given so from that uh, you just rearrange what is the for uh, is it in the is it in can be written as is it not square divided by is it l so what is the value of is it not characteristic impedance is is it not 50 ohm so 50 square divided by 20 so we will get the answer is 125 ohms so 125 is the answer okay then the next question the group delay of the wave with the phase constant is 62.5 and the frequency 4.5 radians per second so here uh, what is the question means we how to find out the group delay of the particular wave that a wave with a phase constant beta okay phase constant means you know it's a beta the beta value is 62.5 and the frequency 4.5 radians so radians means uh, which frequency this is not a f this is a omega so beta value omega value is given the question is group delay okay so already you know the formula for group delay what is the formula for group delay the group delay td equal to okay tg the group delay is equal to beta divided by omega okay phase constant divided by frequency so you just substitute 62.5 divided by 4.5 so we will get the answer as 13.88 okay so 13.88 is the answer Uh, then the next question the characteristic impedance of a transmission line is normally chosen to be dash okay so generally uh, uh, how that is uh, what is the characteristic impedance of a transmission line so the characteristic impedance is normally chosen as either 50 or 75 okay so normally it is chosen as 50 ohms or 75 ohms uh, then the next thing identify the material which are not present in the transmission line setup wave guides cavity resonator antenna oscillator 
so the oscillator is not used in the uh, transmission line setup okay in transmission line setup we may, we have to use the wave guides cavity resonators for transmitting and receiving the signal we have to use antenna okay but uh, there is a, uh, this oscillator is a uh, is not present in the transmission line setup okay and the next thing with the reference to transmission line the normalized load impedance is determined by dash okay what is mean by normalized load impedance means uh, the load impedance value is at l divided by the characteristic impedance is at not means it is said to be the normalized load impedance is at ln okay so the normalized load impedance means we have to divide the particular load impedance by the characteristic impedance of the particular transmission line so dividing the load resistance by characteristic impedance of the line is called as normalized load impedance okay then the next one a 50 ohm transmission line is terminated in a load impedance of 50 plus j 100 ohms so the normalized load impedance is dash okay so here you see uh, a 50 ohm transmission line so what is this 50 this 50 is said to be characteristic impedance is at not so the is at not value is 50 and the load impedance is at l is at l equal to 50 plus j 100 ohms so the question is normalized load impedance so what is mean by normalized load impedance this load impedance divided by is at not it is said to be the normalized load impedance so 50 plus j 100 divided by 50 so we will get 1 plus j 2 ohms okay this is the normalized load impedance then the next one a quarter wave transformer is useful for matching any load impedance to transmission line the statement is true or false it's a false a quarter wave transformer is useful for matching any load impedance to transmission line this is the false statement the quarter wave transformer what is the uh, reason means the quarter wave transformers are a simple circuit that can be used to match real load impedance to a transmission line so using quarter wave transformer we may match only real load real load means the resistance okay purely resistor if the load is purely resistor means that load can be matched with the transmission line okay so the quarter wave transformer cannot match cannot used to match the complex load impedance to a transmission line so that's why the statement is false okay so quarter wave transformer is you, you, you just remember the quarter wave transformer is used to match the real load impedance to a transmission line that is for example rl okay rl is matched with a transmission line if we want to match the complex load impedance complex load impedance means r plus j omega l that complex load impedance cannot be matched with the transmission line using this quarter wave transformer uh then the next thing the major drawback of the quarter wave transformer that it cannot match complex load to a transmission line okay it cannot be overcome so you know the drawback of quarter wave transformer you know uh, the quarter wave transformer is it cannot match the complex load to transmission line okay it is yes but it cannot be overcome this is wrong okay so we can overcome so the major drawback of quarter wave transformer it cannot match the complex load to a transmission line okay but that problem can overcome by transforming the complex load impedance to real load impedance so we may or transform uh, that complex load impedance to real load impedance first then we may uh, use the impedance matching okay so that's why this statement is also false uh, then the next thing complex load impedance can be converted into real load impedance by dash okay so in order to uh, convert the complex load impedance is at l into the real load impedance r l we have to use which step okay scaling down the load impedance introducing an appropriate length of transmission line between load and quarter wave transformer changing the operating wavelength none of the mentioned 
So in order to change the complex load impedance to real load impedance, we have to introduce the approximate length of uh, transmission line between the load and quarter wave transformer. We may, uh, uh, we may change the complex load impedance into real load impedance, okay. Then the next thing, uh, converting the complex load into real load for impedance matching has no effect on the bandwidth of the match. Okay, this is a true or false. This is a false, okay. That is, if you are converting complex load to real load in a impedance matching, it has no effect on the bandwidth of the match. It's a false, okay. Uh, that is, if you are adding the length of a line to your transmission line, uh, then uh, it alters the frequency dependence of the load. So that's why the bandwidth is also altered. So if you are converting complex load to real load, automatically the bandwidth of uh, that particular thing is also uh, changed. Okay, so that's why this uh, statement is uh, false. Then the next thing, the major advantage of quarter wave transformer is dash. It gives proper matching, it gives high gain, broader bandwidth, none of the mention. Okay, so this quarter wave transformer, uh, it provides broader bandwidth. Okay, that is the major advantage of quarter wave transformer. So the quarter wave transformer can be extended to multi-section design uh, in a, a methodological manner to provide a broader bandwidth. Okay, so we may use instead of single transformer, we may use a multi-section transformer in order to provide the broader bandwidth. Then the next thing, if a narrow band impedance match is required, then more multi-section transformers must be used. This is a true or false, okay. If narrow band impedance matching is required, uh, we have to use multi-section transformer. This is the false, okay. If narrow band impedance matches are required means we may use single section quarter wave transformer. Okay, but for wide band impedance matches required, we have to use multi-section. Okay, if you want to provide the narrow band impedance match, a single uh, quarter wave transformer is enough. If you want to provide the wide band impedance match, we may use multi-section quarter wave transformers. Uh, then the next thing, if a single section quarter wave transformer is used for impedance matching at some frequency, then the length of the matching line is dash. So you see the single section quarter wave transformer is used for impedance matching at some frequency, then the length of the matching line is different at a different frequency. Okay, the length is different for different frequencies. The next one, the quarter wave transformer cannot be uh, used for non-TEM line for impedance matching. Okay, it is a true only. The quarter wave transformers, it cannot be used for non-TEM line impedance matching. Okay, for non-TEM impedance matching, this quarter wave transformers cannot be used. The next thing, the reactance associated with transmission line due to the discontinuities, okay, due to the discontinuities can be ignored, have to be matched. Discontinuities do not exist, none of the mention. So the reactants associated with the transmission line uh, due to the discontinuities have to be matched. Okay, so the reactants due to discontinuities in the transmission line contribute to the impedance. So they can be matched by altering the length of the matching section. So by uh, altering the length of the matching session, so we may uh, match the transmission lines. Okay. So these are all the, some of the questions uh, from the quarter wave transformer from the unit three. Okay, so the unit three is a impedance matching in high frequency lines. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to discuss about the single step matching and double step matching and what is the use of the Smith chart. Okay, so thanks for uh, watching this video and uh, please uh, subscribe my channel for more videos and please share this video to your friends also okay so thank you we will meet in the next video